Hi, this is E. David Crawford, Editor-in-Chief of Grand Rounds in Urology. Today, the FDA approved PSMA Gallium Scan for the use in men with prostate cancer. Joining me is one of the pioneers in this uh, development, Rob Ryder, who is the Bing Professor of Urology and Molecular Biology and Director of the Prostate Cancer Treatment and Research Program at the David Geffen School of Medicine at UCLA. Rob, tell us what this, uh, what this means to patients, what it means to urologists, and congratulations on all the work you've done in the last few years over this. So thanks, this has uh, been a real team effort led by nuclear medicine here at UCLA and at UCSF together with uh, strong collaborations from our group and from medical oncology and radiation oncology. So it's truly teamwork. So I think it's, uh, I think it means a great deal. It's really the first uh, approval of a PSMA targeting agent in the United States. As you know, it's been available in Europe and Australia for some time now, um, but it's only really had limited investigational use uh, in this country until now. Um, and I think for the first time, it really gives urologists the ability to stage prostate cancer, both in the newly diagnosed and recurrent setting, uh, more effectively and with greater sensitivity than we've been able to do so before. And so I think we can detect patients who have metastatic disease uh, earlier. We can detect uh, or, or locate the site of disease recurrence uh, more readily. And I think this will lead to uh, improved management. Uh, in some cases, withholding treatments such as surgery that may not be effective. And in other cases, deploying radiation or other treatments in a more focused way uh, to sites of disease uh, than we historically could do so. So, you know, Rob, you've been part of our radar guidelines, uh, and we've been anxiously awaiting this uh, since our Radar 3 publication and how this, this and Oxmum might be used in the evaluation of patients. So, you know, this is this. This is a first step, which means that what? At UCLA, potentially insurance companies may cover it, but what about Medicare and other things? Yeah, so this is, this is a first step, but I think this is really just the tip of the iceberg. So right now it's only approved by the FDA for use at UCLA and UC San Francisco, uh, the two sites where it was uh, evaluated in the US. Um, but I think it will gain further approvals uh, outside of our two institutions over the near future. And certainly there are other PSMA targeted molecules that are, have been recently submitted to the FDA as well. So I expect broader approval. In terms of coverage, uh, private insur insurers we expect may cover this now that it's FDA approved. And we do anticipate that Medicare will also start to cover it. Uh, but the timing of that, I don't know. Uh, it's going to go to CMS now with FDA approval, and we do expect it to be covered sometime over uh, the course of 2021. So I think there will be broader uh, availability of this to uh, patients who need it. So as far as the FDA is concerned, this is uh, the approval, and now we just have to work our way through all the reimbursements and everything. Is that the, That's the correct. Story? So yeah, the FDA is basically saying it's, it's safe, uh, it's effective, it detects prostate cancer, it has high specificity with very few false positives. Uh, and I think as, uh, as you know, uh, from our radar work, this is uh, potentially a real game changer in how we manage this disease. It is, and let me, let me ask you a difficult question. You don't have to answer if you don't want, but let's say I'm a patient and I, I really see the value of this. My PSA is going up, it's, uh, you know, 1.2 after a radical prostatectomy. I'm debating what to do, with where my metastases are, or, or do I have local growth? What, uh, what, what's my out-of-pocket cost for this if I have to do it? So I can tell you at UCLA, the out-of-pocket cost is still around $3,000. Uh, can't tell you the exact number, but somewhere around there until Medicare starts to uh, cover it. And so for now, I think I'm going to basically do what I've done the last four years that we've been evaluating this, which is to explain to patients what it costs and why they need it. And, and basically, you know, if they're capable of affording it, and I think it's going to make a difference in their care, uh, then going ahead and, and ordering it, as you have done as well. Yeah, as you know, there's there a number of patients where it will make a big difference. So one last question, just looking into the future. There's a lot of excitement about theranostics and hooking up this uh, PSMA with some sort of a 
a therapeutic agent. Uh, where is that and, and what are you doing with that? And where do you see this going? Yeah, I think that's clearly where most of the excitement lies you know, moving forward in addition to just a better diagnosis and better staging. Uh, I think phase three uh, trials have been completed for PSMA lutetium by Novartis. Uh, and I expect that we will hear results from that sometime over the course of 2021. Uh, is, at least that's what I understand. Uh, and I think, again, that that is potentially a game changer in terms of our way to deliver radiation specifically to sites of prostate cancer. And although it's going to be approved probably in the castration resistance setting, I anticipate it moving to earlier stages of disease. Maybe oligometastatic disease uh, could be a space where it's really going to make a big difference. One last question, Rob. And sure. again, thanks for uh, taking time from your busy schedule after this excitement today to share it with our group. So uh, in, in the, um, what, what do you see happening in, in the future with this, uh, with this test and in, in diagnosis of the local lesion? And, and I've seen this uh, where patients have had the scan and something lights up in the prostate. And uh, you know that's and that has some implications when we're talking about targeted focal therapy and and other ablative technologies. Where do you see that going? Yeah, I think it's a great question. I think for for looking at the local disease, we just completed a study where we actually did that and compared it to MRI, and we didn't find a major improvement over MRI for detection of disease. But in many cases, it localized disease better to the contralateral side. So I think it does have promise for improving the ability to select appropriate patients for focal therapy. It's definitely an, er an area of interest for, for me personally and, and for our group uh, going forward. Great. Anything else I missed do you want to say? Uh, no, I think you covered it. I think this is just the, uh, the first uh, step forward in, in, in bringing this to the masses. Uh, it's already uh, revolutionized you know, management in, in Europe and Australia and other places. There's a tremendous amount of excitement. And so after many years of work collaboratively here with the team, it's great to see this finally get approval today. Well, you and, you and the group at uh, UCS have, have has done a terrific job and, and thank you. And I know I've sent a lot of patients to you. They've been very happy and, it's, and it really has made a difference. And, it's, uh, you know, it's taken a while to get here, but, you know, thank God the day's here and now we can move forward. And I think this is a game changer. So thanks very much for your time. Appreciate it. You're Rob. very welcome. Always good to talk to you, Dave. Thank you. All right.